And on the front it says, uh, no MSG. So I read the label. <laughs> yeah. There it was. Hydrolyzed yeast protein yeah. is, MSG. is MSG. Yes, it is. This is Ron Wayman with uh, Mind Body Dictionary. And today I have a, a friend and person I've known for decades, Dave Udy. And he's fabulous. He's uh, got so many talents. And, and with what we want to do with Mind Body Dictionary is help people with their mind, their heart, and their body and really connect and enjoy their life by becoming really connected to all aspects of their lives in a positive way. And so, Dave, thanks for joining me today. Uh, my pleasure, Ron. Yeah. So, uh, Dave, you... Uh, you started many things, and the one that uh, company that we're talking to you about, of course, is your company that produces a wonderful sauce for cooking, and it's awesome. And so, Dave, can you just tell me about you uh, and your desire to make something that for the public that is very valuable? And you go ahead and just give us a little history. Well, I'm not a chef but I've been cooking since I was five years old at my mother and grandmother's knees. Um, and so I learned to cook from them and they didn't use garbage. Everything was fresh. Uh, we always had a garden um, in the summertime. I know because I ended up weeding it, um, but I still have a garden. And so fresh food is important to us. We, with our business, travel a lot. And the latest lockdown has been really nice because I've been able to cook uh, at least, you know, a dinner every single day and using pure natural ingredients. I'm very picky about what I get. Um, I strive to get organic whenever possible. Um, we participate in the farmer's markets in the summertime, so we have access to grass-fed, grass-finished beef, pastured chickens, pastured pork, pastured eggs, and in the wintertime, they're not always easy to find, but if you look around, you can. And then we make, actually we make five products. We make a garlic sauce that will literally go on anything. It's a marinade, you can thin it down for salad dressing, it's, it's a dipping sauce for bread, um, just, I mean, literally anything. It's amazing on roasted vegetables. We actually had some roasted Brussels sprouts last night for dinner. Wow, that's and amazing. Some, yes, and some uh, lamb chops. Huh. And they got marinated in the sauce as well. Yeah, I was going to ask if you did your meats also in your sauce or not. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing marinade. Most of my customers love it on uh, chicken, mm -hmm. uh, but it literally will go on anything. We've had in the last week, we've had steak, pork chops, and lamb and salmon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, when you say sauce, a lot of people might be thinking of tomatoes, but we're not talking tomatoes here. Are we? Ooh. No, you know, what are we talking we about? This, we call it Sicilian sauce. Um, I've been making it since 1986 and playing with the recipe. Um, I finally got it down to where I thought it was perfect about 11 years ago. And uh, we used to just make it at Christmas time. We called it, uh, we actually made it at Thanksgiving. We called it Garlic Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And uh, then we'd hand it out to clients and friends and neighbors and customers and whatever as Christmas gifts. And in 2010, they started driving us crazy. They I mean, all wanted, wanted more. <laughs> but, you know, we couldn't sell it to them, you know, and we only make enough you know, for the gift thing and, of course, enough for us to last for a year. Um, so... Uh, my wife, Mary, and I decided to see what it would take to uh, 
go public with it. And we started in January, got all the paperwork and testing and everything done, had to make a few adjustments um, in the recipe. Uh, not much, actually. We, we add a little teeny bit of uh, ascorbic acid um, to bring the pH down to where it needs to be because we use fresh raw garlic. Um, and you have to be a little careful with fresh raw garlic putting it in olive oil. We actually sterilize it. Um, why do you have to be careful? Well, we don't just don't want to take any chances. Yeah, yeah. so the contamination or food poisoning or what? Garlic comes out of the ground. Right. People right. forget that. <laughs> and, and so it's going to have all of the uh, microbes. Microbes. And so we actually sterilize it in a 3% hydrogen peroxide solution. We use food grade, of course. Um, that is not FDA approved, but it is EPA approved. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is, uh, it will actually kill a virus in less than a minute. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. FYI. Um, yeah, for and, many reasons. Yeah, and it, it breaks down and becomes water. I mean, you know, it's like soaking it in Clorox without the ugly side effects of Clorox which so, I can stand the smell of Clorox. So what's the difference between doing your sauce uh, with uh, the raw as opposed to the cooked garlic? You know, someone would just eat it up. Oh, okay. raw garlic, okay, we don't, we, we clean it. It's actually every piece is hand clean. Uh, then we sterilize it um, and then we keep it refrigerated. It'll actually last for months in the refrigerator uh, because there's no microbes, there's nothing. Um, mm -hmm. And then when we make the sauce, we blend it. That's the first time it's truly broken down. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know, fresh raw garlic is absolutely amazing for its health benefits. Uh, but it has to be crushed to release the allicin and the sulfides in the garlic, which is what all the health benefits come from. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's ground up when we make the sauce not before, and bottled immediately. Uh, we've actually had it tested, and our sauce actually has a three-year shelf life. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is... Which is amazing. Yeah, uh, because it's so fresh, and you haven't processed it very much at all. I mean, you haven't really that well, much. Uh, our processing is blending ingredients, period. <laughs> okay, and everything's natural. We use um, the fresh raw garlic. We use uh, red wine vinegar because that's traditional Italian Mediterranean. Uh, we use uh, pure olive oil. And pure is not first pressed. Although 15% of our olive oil is extra virgin, the rest is uh, second press. Why? Um, why? Why not just use the first press? Well, because it's... Uh, way too expensive. Oh, okay. okay. And the second press is fine, and it actually has a milder flavor. Um, if we used really good first press olive oil, the olive oil would be a little strong flavor-wise. So that's what we use. But it's still. So you chose it not based upon um, necessarily organic point of view. You just based it more on on the cost and on the flavor. Right, on that part. And flavor. Um, the the problem is, is our our even our tiny bottles sell for fifteen dollars a piece. Right. Um, a little goes a long way. Um, if I went all the way to organic to get the certification, it'd be thirty dollars for the little bottle. Yeah, and it's still natural. You know, uh, second press olive oil is just that. That's it. It's second press. It doesn't have the unique bite. I don't know if you've ever had really good, fresh, extra virgin olive oil, but it's got a bite to it. And um, that's what I'm trying to not have. Now, we actually mix it with it all the time, especially if we're doing bread dipping. Well, but I noticed when I was using it that it your product is really strong in and of itself. I mean, oh, yeah. I don't need a lot. 
no. go, go a long ways. It's a very potent product in and of itself. Yeah. If you look we, at it that way. we recommend you never use more than a coating. And I don't, even if you're marinating meat, I'm, I mean, I did lamb last night um, and I didn't use more than a coating and stuck it in the fridge for while I fixed everything else. It's in there about 45 minutes, it takes at least 30. Um, and any cut of meat and you're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, doesn't, it's, it doesn't matter what kind of meat, it works on everything. Um, yeah, and you mentioned a lot of meat, but you put it on all your, res I mean, you cook your potatoes, your, your, you mentioned oh, yeah, Brussels yeah. sprouts and everything. If I'm, if I'm roasting anything in the oven, it's just so much more flavorful than just plain olive oil. And we do baby potatoes and we do, oh, I've done beans and asparagus. And last night we did uh, Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you about Brussels sprouts. I spent my, I like Brussels sprouts, always have. But I spent my whole life steaming them. I mean, that's what grandma taught me to do. Yeah. I am. And, um, and then we put sauce on it. Uh, growing up, we put vinegar on them. Um, and then I had, I learned from my customers a lot. Um, and somebody said, oh, you got to put the sauce on them and roast them. So I did. Um, and I cut the time back. We used to say 30 minutes, but it's really on about 20 to 25 uh, when you're roasting them. And you just pull them out halfway and stir them a little bit. But um, I got lazy one night and decided just to steam them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even eat them. That's the difference. I mean, it's just night and day between the steamed um, Brussels sprouts and the roasted ones. They're just absolutely amazing. And something that's interesting about our sauce is that it takes the bitterness because Brussels sprouts are bitter. I have a bitter taste on me. Yeah. Uh, it takes the bitter taste completely away. It does the same thing for kale and arugula, both of which are really bitter. Mm -hmm. You got the sauce on them and the bitterness just disappears. You know, uh, the bitter herbs and the bitter foods actually help your liver. Uh, but I, I would bet that or venture to say that if you're using your sauce olive oil, which would affect the liver directly, with those bitter herbs, it might be, those two together might be a balancing point because you need the oils, but sometimes people have a hard time digesting the oils. If they put it with those bitter herbs or bitter vegetables, like you said, that might have great value, you know, to push it through. Yeah, uh, actually when we're at the downtown farmer's market in the summertime, um, mm -hmm. people will walk by with the arugula or kale mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll get them to rip off a little piece and taste it and then rip off a second little piece and dip it in the sauce. Uh -huh. we'll doing that this year. Yeah, because but, of <laughs> Yeah, well, it's yeah. Uh, But what's interesting is they look at me and go, what happened? And I, I, I don't know if it's the vinegar or the oil or what, but it just flips the flavor. So we all know that uh, kale and arugula are good for us, as long as they're organic. Yeah. Um, they're both on the dirty dozen list this year for pesticides. Um, so anyway, it's just amazing. And, but, and, and as if you're using it for salad dressing, we recommend you thin it down. Um, mm -hmm. I actually have the recipe right on the bottle to thin it down with some more olive oil and red wine vinegar. Yeah. Uh, but the idea of, you actually, ha the product is an adaptogen. So it can adapt to those herbs. So if you have it with different uh, plants, it probably tastes a little bit, bit different, most likely, correct? And it might um, do something different in the body. Well, the thing is, is it'll go, it literally will go on anything. Uh -huh. uh, it's amazing on tomatoes, it's amazing on cucumbers. Um, I don't particularly care for it on fruit, but a lot of people do. Um, I have customers that uh, put it on peaches in the summertime and grill them, and they put it on plums and grill them, and they put them on apricots and grill them. It's kind of whatever's in season, uh -huh. um, and then use them as a uh, an hors d'oeuvre. Okay, they'll stuff some 
you know, quality cheese in the middle after, you know, to melt it and serve it as an hors d'oeuvre. Um, I've never actually tried the grilled peaches. My kids think the sauce on peaches is just as good as it gets. Personally, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> One little tiny tidbit from my world is if people have a difficult time with their, you know, digestion of fats and cucumbers uh, help emulsify the fats. So if every once in a while someone is using the sauce with cucumbers, that'd be good you know, to add into their diet if they have a little difficult time with that. So just a little little tidbit there. Um, yeah, one, one of the recipes we give people is for a very traditional Italian tomato, cucumber, red onion salad. Yeah. And just put the sauce on it. Again, never more than enough to coat. That's all it ever takes. Yeah, this sounds delicious and wonderful. Oh, really good. Um, so um, do you have a bottle there? Yeah. You wanted to look at it here? Because some people can buy it in the store, but it's not in all the stores in the United States because uh, your company's still growing, right? Right. And, and yeah. so... Local stores in Utah. We actually have a little store in Elko, Nevada, a little uh, store in Pocatello, Idaho. But other than that, it's online. Yeah. Uh, we do lots of it online. When we do shows... We actually go all over the West. Uh -huh. We've been to Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Nevada. Uh, it's yeah, it's great. And and, and so they can find it by the Sicilian sauce, or how do they find it? Uh, it's called Grandma Sandinos. There we go. Yeah, Grandma Sandinos. And even though we have Dave is behind that, so is Mary, and she has her picture on there, at least a... a, a... Well, she's a lot prettier than I am. <laughs> now, you know that, uh, I mean, I'm into herbs too and made a special herb little package, and, and I blended mine so that the mind and the body and the heart could be one. That was my intention. And when you blended yours, you wanted yours to really... Taste good, feel good, be healthy, right? To yeah, really yeah, make oh, a yeah. difference. And yeah, I'm not in. I'm not into um, junk food, except sometimes when I'm on the road and I'm hungry. You know, I'm yeah. a normal human being. Um, but the uh, everything in there, actually, every herb we use, and we both use a lot of the same herbs. Mm -hmm. uh, every single one has a medicinal value, every right. single one. And the only thing, we do put a little teeny bit of organic cane sugar in it, but it is not the first ingredient. Matter of fact, there's one gram per serving. You know what a gram of sugar looks like? <laughs> yeah, less than that, yeah. Um, so, but some people don't get that what goes in the gut affects the head. How do you explain that to people? Well, it's easy, okay? Um, everything starts in your gut. That's where everything is processed. And you've got to put the nutrients in the system so that everything can take advantage of it. Whether it's your brain, your heart, your liver, your lungs, your muscles, you know, they have to have the nutrients. And getting nutrients in our day um, is hard because the food doesn't have it anymore or it's way cut back. That's one of the reasons I only uh, try always to go for organic or grow my own because then I know they're organic. And so, you know, it, it, your body, like any system, can only be as good as the fuel you put in. You know, I said that one time when I was talking to a professional in the health industry. I said, because uh, they said, oh, food has nothing to do with your body. It is, it's just fuel and it doesn't matter. You can put whatever you want in there. And I said, okay, let's put some dirt in your gas tank, in your car. In your nice car, let's put some dirt in there and see what it does. And he didn't know what to say to that. 
but he actually believed that it, that it had no relationship. And it's bizarre, but of course. Anyway, so I agree. Your body only runs and your mind only runs as a fuel. So if you, with your herbs, how do you, you know, which herbs are you using that really has, well, you're saying medicinal effect that might make a difference with the mind and the body? Well, every one of them, because it, it'll keep you healthy. Um, the olive oil, I mean, is proven to be good for you. Uh, mm. Vinegar is good for you. Um, the garlic, everybody knows, I think, in today's world. <laughs> Well, some people don't know. Major health food. I do know that the doctors will tell people that if they're on blood pressure medication, they shouldn't have garlic and broccoli and all these vegetables. I go, hmm, that tells you something. <laughs> that well, these vegetables actually do something. <laughs> okay, so I got this book once. Uh, it was the contraindications of medicine. Because that's exactly what you're talking about. And so I figured if you look up the drug and then see what you're not supposed to take with it, then take that and throw away the drug. <laughs> hey, I, I'm so opposed to drugs, I don't even take aspirin. Yeah. Yeah. If I and have I, a pain, I, it'll be white willow bark, you know, yeah. something natural. Well, at one time it was from the white willow bark, and then they made it synthetic. So, well, that's but, what aspirin is. Yeah, it's white willow is. bark, synthesized and patented. That's what they have, and in fact, most drugs are built that way. They find out what happens in nature, and then they make a synthetic compound of it. And right. synthetic compound is not the same. The body yeah. knows the difference. It spin differently, and different things like that. Um, well, one of the things I like to demonstrate when I'm talking about synthetics is I say, shake hands, but use your left hand. It's awkward. Your body is built to take in natural stuff. And the synthetics don't work, or they cause side effects, or they work too much, or, I mean, it goes on and on. And it's just awkward if you try and shake left hands. Of course, these days we do elbow bumps, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, there's a study done on vitamin E. And so they did a graph of vitamin E, both synthetic and natural vitamin E. And at first they're the same, but over time, the natural keeps being a benefit and the set synthetic either stays the same or goes down. It can never match natural. The body knows the difference. Even though the chemical compound could be exactly the same, it has a different spin, the body can tell. Well, but, they technically can't be exactly the same because otherwise they couldn't patent it. It's like vitamin D, all right? Vitamin D2 is synthetic. Your body will accept it, but it doesn't really work. So you have to use the D3 which is what your body naturally makes. And I mean, that's just one of many. We're all about the same. Yeah, one of, one of many. Um, now, all this effort that you put into making your product, you take a lot of time. I've been at your place and I've watched the process. There's a lot to do and you do it very meticulously. And, um, uh, because in a in a large manufacturing situation, they would want to cut corners. Um, they would want to take products that they could minimize the cost, whether they they gave that to the consumer or not would be would be um, another matter. But I've noticed that the end product, when you have done all that you did, makes a huge difference in the person's experience of that product. Do you agree? The oh, ingredients yeah. and how you process it. Yeah, we're very, very picky. Um, I look at it this way. Uh, nobody eats more of this stuff than my family. Mm -hmm. My That's little right. granddaughter that was in here earlier, she'll sit with a toothpick and dip cucumbers in the sauce and tomatoes mm -hmm. and 
just about anything else, actually. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I care about your family. So we can go yeah. to organic because it's just just not feasible. Yeah. Um, so we get the cleanest stuff we have. Every ingredient that is reasonably cost effective that is organic, we get and we put in, but we can't make claims on it. So we say it's all natural. And what's funny is the list of what isn't in it is longer than the list of what is. Oh, yeah. You mean like not, not gluten, et cetera? Well, here, here, let me read you the list. And there's probably a couple more. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, sodium-free, no salt, no MSG, no soy, no nuts, no corn, no eggs, and it's vegan. So, and that's best for me. <laughs> yeah, so you, you make a difference. So I'm going to take a different tangent because you mentioned that list. And of course, to me, it wouldn't have gluten because you don't have any weed or any of that. But you know, you'd be surprised. I bought, uh, well, my wife bought some uh, kimchi for me. And on there, one of the ingredients was a hydrolyzed um, a gluten product. And I couldn't believe that they would put that in a vegetable-based product like that. So you, it, it was actually on... It was probably MSG. Yeah. And so MSG has 20 they, names. Yeah. Yeah. So from your view, why is MSG so harmful? Of course, I have my view, but let's let's hear what Dave has to say about it. Well, it's a major allergen. Even for people that aren't really allergic to it, um, it's still a major allergen and it's not good for you. Um, it screws up your brain. Um, it screws up the transmitters in your brain. I mean, MSG is just not, it makes stuff taste good. That's why it's used. Yeah. And, and there's 20 names. Okay. I, I had some people uh, at the farmer's market that were making a uh, marinara sauce. And on the front it says, uh, no MSG. So I read the label. <laughs> yeah. There it was. Hydrolyzed yeast protein yes, is, MSG. is MSG. Yes, it is. Hydrolyzed yeast protein. I saw a product on the internet that they said all natural ingredients, right? And the first ingredient, the first, and it was for uh, it, it, it was for meat, you know, to make meat, and so it's healthy. First ingredient was hydrolyzed yeast, and I said that's MSG. These guys are full yeah. of it. It's a tenderizer. And, and and it's possible the the person who put it together may not even have known. <laughs> so, no, that's you know, a possibility, you know, because people don't understand there are 20 names. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, when I was younger, I used Accent to tenderize steaks and stuff like that. Um, so I read a little more about MSG and decided maybe my body didn't want that. Mm -hmm. Now, and, you know, better meat. <laughs> well, some people, yeah, that's right. Some people ha are fortunate to get headaches when they get MSG. Now, I know oh, that wow. sounds odd, but at least they know, you know, that food is harmful. But there's other individuals that do not get the headaches and they and they get that MSG going in their body for a long period of time and they get toxic and they then it's more difficult. Well, they start having other issues, but don't realize it's the garbage. I mean, there's so many things. Um, my rule of thumb is if you can't pronounce it, don't buy it. And yeah. we've sold over 40,000 bottles in 10 years. Wow. That means, I and mean, almost all of it is in farmers markets and shows. I mean, some in grocery stores, because we are in a few. But um, what happens is that people will tell me their stories. Uh, lots of them about their allergens and we're so clean it's ridiculous now if you're allergic to olive oil and garlic yeah. I'm sorry <laughs> yeah that's why I mentioned the cucumbers and a few other things and and uh, there's turmeric and things like that but but if uh, people are getting the proper food they their body starts to heal anyway they uh, that's the body's meant to heal itself 
Um, actually, vitamins are nice. That's fine. But it doesn't, it, it supports. It's not the healer. The healer's inside. Right? Well, but it has to have the raw materials. Yes. And that's where the food comes in, is the raw materials. Now, you yeah. have... You have other products besides the, the special sauce, the Sicilian sauce. You yes. have some herbal combinations. Uh, I know the salmon one, right? The fish one. Well, here I can show them to you. Okay, we have uh, Grandma's Rub. <laughs> Grandma's Rub. Okay. okay. That's specifically intended for meat. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and it's that little packet you just saw. I've done five sets of baby back ribs with what's in there. It's really, really potent. And I warn people. <laughs> um, no, I do. I think to put that on the label. <laughs> uh, it probably says something. Because there's always recipes. I'm sure. In your label, you have a lot of stuff. And then this one is for fish. And uh, this is the last one, the most current one I did. Um, and it took me six months to formulate that and get oh. what, everything I wanted. It is specific for fish. It's amazing on chicken. It's great in tuna salad and chicken salad. And it's really good in artichokes. Wow. So it's, it's got lots of lemon and dill in it. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's the fish thing. But chicken salad, all right? Well, that's it. that are really hard. And so we make it with a little bit of the fish sprinkle. And we never use a lot because we don't want it. To, we don't, we're not here to bury flavors. We're here to enhance flavors. Well, and, the herbs, the cool thing about herbal blends, and I've learned this very well on my own and, and doing all this, is you don't need a lot. You want the right combination because the body can take uh, whatever's there and use what it needs, as long as it's not under yeah. or over. Well, all my stuff is healthy, but that's not the intention. The intention is, tastes good. <laughs> I think it's both. I think it's both. You know, and uh, in the, the mind-body dictionary, I actually put in different conditions, anxiety and, and, and panic and arthritis and all of this. And there's a food section but there's also a product section and um, we're, you know, I, I'm going to have you, Dave, say, okay, let's find out what you think when people are having certain conditions, arthritis, in my opinion, they could use this and they could use this for a lot of those other conditions. And because if the body is fed, the mind will be clear. And, and, and now let's go back to taste. I wanted to say that because I want to come back to taste. A food tastes good for two reasons. One, just for pleasure. But that, what's the other reason why a food may taste good besides pleasure? Well, yeah. Um, you know, I believe that if it's good for you, it'll taste better. Simple. Yeah. So satisfy the, satisfy the taste buds. Make sure it's all natural and healthy. And it, you know. It's, it's just better. Well, you know, and that's the irony to this, when you have excess sugar, MSG, it's fooling the body, right? Right. And so when it fools the body, that's part of the issue. A lot of people think it's the substance only. It's, it's, it's not just the substance, it's the fact that the brain has to, and the liver has to compensate that it has to grab extra potassium or phosphorus or something else. And if it tastes good and it is good for you, then you have no extra compensation. The body just, oh, okay. And it was more in relaxing state. So, um, well, good. So anything else you wanna bring up or talk about well, in your, your company and all that you do? Just mentioned the other two seasonings. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted one, you on your little pathway. This is our garlic butter mix. You put this packet in a pound of garlic butter, okay? Uh, obviously, everything we make is garlic based. Um, and then we have this one. It's called our herbal dip and spread. And huh. you get about five servings out of this little packet. Let's see, size wise. Um, it doesn't anything creamy. Or 
one of the recipes we give people is for a Tuscan chicken stew, and you use that as one of the seasonings, and it's it's like Italian seasoning on steroids. In other words, you'll make this whole pot of stew, and it's you use maybe a tablespoon, and that's it. Everything we make is potent, and the reason they are is because there's nothing in them. There's a little bit of sugar in the sauce because it won't blend right without it. And, but there's no sugar, no salt in any of our seasonings. There's no fillers. And that's why they go so far is it's pure herbs. Yeah, I bet you your stews are amazing. Do you do stews or soups or? Oh yeah, or? well in wintertime, we live on soups and stews. And then, and then you probably do a little bit of pasta and vegetables, lots of vegetables with some of your seasonings. And, or do you do the sauce on that? I, it just depends. It, it's like, uh, I'll marinate any meat in my sauce, except steak. I basically sprinkle a little of the rub on it, grill them, and then as they rest, I finish them with a big pat of our garlic butter. <laughs> I consider that steak sauce. And it's absolutely amazing. Well, that's great. Well, um, I know that your product is of great value. And so that's part of what we want people to understand because they can be fooled by a lot of the labels at the store. And they, some people go by a hey, it's cheap, they don't, you know, this, it, it, or they use the money as part of it. It isn't always the amount of money, it's the amount of the quality of the product that you have. And it tastes great. Uh, it's amazing. It's, it's very, very good. Um, now on your website, do you have uh, a lot of testimonials that you've done or? Well, we just barely got through redoing a test site mm -hmm. or the website. Um, the old one we had was, it'd been running for 10 years with no real changes. And it was time for an upgrade. So we've only got a couple of testimonials. Uh, we would certainly invite, actually I'm going to do an email and invite all of our customers um, to please, now that we're functioning, go on and do testimonials. And then in a month, I'm gonna run a recipe contest. Oh, well, that's great. Well, that's I get all kinds of stuff from customers. Um, I'm not a big Instapot or Crock-Pot person. I'm old-fashioned on the stove or in the oven. And I have tons of customers that just love doing the Crock-Pot or the Instapot. And I just, you know, my kids gave me one of each and I never <laughs> use it. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah. in my younger days, I had a pressure cooker popped the top yeah. in the kitchen. And I was cleaning stuff off the ceiling for weeks. <laughs> so I'm a little intimidated by pressure cooking, which is the Instant Pot. Well, I, yeah, but you know, the crock pot is not that way, but that's okay. No, yeah, and I just, um, I don't, I don't they, decide what I'm eating for dinner until about four. Yeah, well, you know, uh in a lot of countries of the world they don't have refrigerators and so whatever they bought the day at the market is what they eat at the night and that's yep. the way it is which is why some countries have a problem right now because they don't have that option when there's this shutdown you know going on currently well we're uh, about to have that option or non-option <laughs> yeah we don't want to go that far <laughs> but uh um yeah i lost my thought on on part of it but but, um, oh, I know what it was, his testimonials. You actually have a lot in your head because you've been in so many shows. You haven't been an internet-based company. You've been a market-based company. You've been out of the right. market talking to people. That's where you get your testimonies. You ought to just write them down with, from what you hear from the past. You've got them in your head, a lot of them, I, I'm well, sure. Well, I, I do. Uh, and we really miss doing the markets. Yeah, That's you the like the people. Yeah, we, you know, we get to interact with people, we get to talk to them, we get to give them suggestions. We, and sometimes we get to hear all their health issues. Of course, yes. <laughs> well, you know. I like to share. We, we, uh, we make a very healthy product. Um, 
and as you know, um, it takes us four days to make a batch. Yeah. Okay? Four days. That's awesome, actually. And because the process of making it is as important, in my opinion, as what goes in the bottle. It's in your heart, it's in your, uh, you know, your, your whole methodology and all that you put into it. So uh, it's a people product. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. So you care about people. Yeah. Uh, that's what it's about. And that's your joy. So, um, and I would venture um, that the recipe part will be really good. I, I want to have some of your recipes over on my site and, uh, and then you just keep growing your recipes and, and cause it's endless what you can use this with. Uh, well, not endless, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty broad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty broad. Yeah, you know, people put it in their lasagna. People, uh, we do it straight on pasta with a little bit of, you know, Parmesan cheese and that's all we use. Huh. Um, red sauces typically have way more sugar in them than we have. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which I think is better. Plus the flavor is amazing. Um, you know, people wouldn't think of uh, technically a vinaigrette would go on pasta, but it's really good. Yeah. Pasta yeah. salads is even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think it'd be fabulous. And to do it in a lot of different combinations and, uh, and you have some people play with it and they throw an extra little herb here and there sometimes or a little extra. Oh, I get people with everything. Uh, yeah. Mostly what they do is thin it down with olive oil as they get down and the bottle gets short. <laughs> they keep adding olive oil to it. It's mm -hmm. so potent that they can get away with that. Our product well, is actually very frugal because you don't need to drown anything. Uh -huh. well, it goes a long way. And do some people add a little salsa or a little, little, little extra cayenne or something to some of that that you have or not? Oh yeah, because it's, our stuff isn't hot. It's got a little teeny hint of red pepper in it. Mm -hmm. um, but people that like stuff hot will add it. If I, for instance, if I saute shrimp to make scampi, all I use is well, I actually use a little extra olive oil, uh, the sauce, and then I put hot peppers on. Because I think seafood, especially shrimp, needs a little bite to it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no people play with it. They do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and I, I, I yeah I agree agree with that because um, part of the zest of life, of course, is taste, and it actually wakes us up. I think, and uh, taste is in, indicative of actually nourish, uh, nourishments or nu nutrients, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, and do, do you ever do a little bit of, I know in your blend you do this, but a, uh, a lemon or an orange or, you know, something like that, just throw that in a little bit of the citrus or is that more just in your blends? Um, no, on the fish, um, actually, if I grill salmon, I use the sauce. If I poach or saute fish, I use the fish sprinkle, mm -hmm. which has got a lot of lemon in it anyway. But if I poach fish, I use a whole lemon sliced on it, underneath it. Uh, that's yeah, actually you're my stuff. Um, and, and butter. I, I'm a butter person. So am I. I was raised that way. We, may, well, we, we did our own butter when I was a kid. You well, I, I get that because I actually spent five summers as a kid at my grandparents and worked across the street at a dairy farm. So to this day, I can't drink um, homogenized milk. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Gag. If I drink raw milk, I have no issues. Um, and, you know, we made our own butter. We had cream. We made ice cream out of it. Right. We had farm fresh eggs. Remember when they had to candle eggs to make sure that they weren't? Fertilize. <laughs> nah. Yeah, I know. They they had, you know, chickens and a few roosters, and it was a small dairy farm, but uh -huh. uh, they probably had fifty cows or more. And uh, you know, you get you get used to eating food like that, 
and it's really hard to eat the chunk. Well, and you know, you bring up the farm fresh eggs. I believe that this thing about the eggs and the Epstein Barr virus that another individual is out there telling everyone, if it's a truly farm fresh egg and you haven't washed it yet, like they do in Amer stores in the US, um, I don't think there's any issue with it. It's when the people wash it, it stores for a long time and in the fridge, that's when that virus has a heyday. Um, well, you should never wash an egg until you're used, ready to use it. Yeah, Ever. well, that's the way it's supposed to be because it takes the coating off the egg and that's what mm -hmm. they professionally- And that's what makes them go bad. Right, right, that's the irony to this. I, you know, when I was in Australia and I looked in the store, they didn't have any refrigeration of the eggs there. They had it just out on the shelves and if you eat it by a certain time, it's fine. Um, uh, speaking of which, you know, uh, uh, poached eggs or uh, hard boiled eggs with your sauce is quite good, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, um, when we go to the farmer's markets, we'll take some hard boiled eggs, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll take a bite off the top and then start pouring sauce on it. <laughs> it's actually really good. I have That's a lot just, of customers that just love it on scrambled eggs, too. Yes, yes, scrambled would be good. I just, I like the, I like the hard boiled one with it better than the scrambled. Mm -hmm. for some reason. Mm -hmm. That's just more of my favorite. And uh, yeah, uh, that's, that's very, very good. Um, and, uh, and also I, I just really like it sauteed with the vegetables and, and yep. the pasta. Just, yep. it just like I'm in Italy all of a sudden or Greece. So yeah. just like, you know, I'm there. Which, by the way, you know, we were talking the other day, and you mentioned the Mediterranean diet, and um, you, you and I both know the value of the Mediterranean diet. They talk a lot about it, but there's uh, an essence to that, and it includes your sauce. But what did you say? You remember what you said to me about the Mediterranean diet? Well, it's the it's the best diet there is. They incorporate all kinds of things in it, and there's a there's a few secrets. Oh, I remember what I was telling you. It was about the beans. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big bean eater, but um, pasta basil, which is pasta with beans and a soup, but they use a lot of beans anyway, especially white kidney beans. Uh, they call them cannolis. No, not cannolis. Yeah, cannellis. Oh, cannelli. Cannelli beans. Um, cannolis are dessert, um, but the uh, the funny thing is, is that those beans actually block the digestion of the pasta, hmm. so that you're not getting this huge sugar uh, yeah. rush. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if you get pasta from Italy, it's not going to be as uh, won't turn to sugar as fast, I guess is what I'm trying to say, as the stuff you get here. Um, I get uh, almost exclusively Italian pasta. Uh, Which is better. European grain is different than the U.S. grain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it actually doesn't have even close to the amount of gluten in it. No, no, no. The and gluten, by far and it's, a sturdier, it's a sturdier flour. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain that. It's... It's just higher things. quality. Yeah. It's well, just, yeah, much higher quality. And, uh, but uh, in any case, even with the the, the lower quality, it, uh, it's still an amazing, amazing uh, that if you if you're able to block, and I don't I don't know if the word block is the best word because there'll be yeah. still some carbohydrate digestion. There'll be some. Oh, yeah. But it probably yeah. inhibits it. It probably reduces yeah, it. Yeah, that's better. It inhibits it. Yeah. Slows it down so you don't get the sugar rush. Right. Because um, when you when someone eats uh, white flour bread, it's going to break down much faster and the sugar is going to go in too quick. If you have a way to slow that down and bring it into your intestinal tract a lot slower, then you don't have those insulin spikes and other problems yeah. that are associated with blood sugar problems that we have in our society, which are really rampant, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's it's like the difference between uh, fruit juice and fruit. Right. You know, you juice the fruit, and it's you might as well have a Coke. It's pure sugar. It is. If you eat the fruit, the pulp of the fruit slows the digestion down, and you don't get the spikes. It's just craziness. Well, it's true. And so I stopped doing um, smoothies like that and just said, hey, I'm going to eat the fruit. And I feel so much better, actually. And, and if people want to cleanse, they can actually do the fruit individually, right? And, yeah. um, and that will do the cleanse. You can still do your smoothies, but then add a piece of fruit that you actually chew and get the fiber that way. Um, and the same idea, you're right. It's the same concept. Um, uh, or, or use the whole fruit mm -hmm. in your smoothie. You know, don't juice it. Don't use juice. Use the whole fruit. Add some water or some ice or something because the whole fruit's what makes the difference. Yeah. Everyone's getting accustomed to having meetings like this, you know. <laughs> Someday we'll trust that we don't have to social distance, social shame, that we can actually yeah. hug. That's and, what uh, I miss. No hugs. Yeah. You know, uh, there's an irony to all this is there's so much concern and worry about the immune system of people. But if you associate with people, our immune systems are better off actually. We get accustomed to each other's germs, the antibodies build, we're healthier people. If we spend too much time in our caves, uh, we'll become less able to handle life. We come out, that's right. Well, it's I'm like kids, famous. you know? Parents get all worried about them playing in the dirt. Okay, and that's how they build their immune system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, yeah, that's uh, how I built my immune system when I was a kid. The yeah. problem with my immune system, I got in all the accidents and injuries and broken nose and all this other stuff. <laughs> that, was, that was the problem. It wasn't the dirt, it was injuries. So anyway. I know, you probably drank out of a garden hose too. <laughs> yes, I did. And so did you probably too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tastes weird, but you bet. <laughs> yeah, then I had to clean out the lead later. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, good. Thank you and, and for spending some time with me, Dave. You're great. My pleasure.